Hi, everyone. We are about to talk about the second part of chapter three. So yesterday we learned about matter, so physical and chemical changes, physical and chemical properties. Today we're going to extend that a little bit and learn about elements, compounds, pure substances, and mixtures. Okay, so it is a little bit definition stuff, but the definitions don't really uh, mean as much without some examples behind it. So today we're going to talk about how we use these terms, what they mean, and hopefully connect them to real life examples for you guys. All right. And if you ever want to know more, I do always put at the beginning of our PowerPoints uh, what chapter sections we're working on. So you are always welcome to go back to the textbook, look at these chapter sections, get more information. Um, there'll be more examples in there to help you with your understanding. So the first thing, this is chemistry, and we can't do chemistry without elements, right? Uh, I think half of my wardrobe has the periodic table on it. So that is like the bread and butter of this class. So what is an element? An element is going to be a substance that cannot be broken down by chemical means. So there are um, nuclear means of breaking down atoms, but we can't break them down with just simple chemical reactions. Okay. Um, our elements are going to be anything you can find on the periodic table. So speaking of the periodic table, you guys... Um, are going to kind of want to have one that you can reference. Uh, it doesn't have to be printed out or physical, but just do a quick Google search, periodictable.com. It'll pull one up for you um, if you ever want to reference, right? If you need to know, is tin an element or is it a compound? Well, if you can find tin on the periodic table, it's an element. Um, it would usually be at this time that we'd kind of uh, request slash require you memorize some of the symbols for the more common elements. Um, that's not really something we can do online because you wouldn't memorize them. If I asked you to take a quiz on the elements and their symbols, you could just have the periodic table in front of you. So I'm just going to trust that you guys are going to try to familiar, familiarize yourself with some of that. So common examples, of course, iron, aluminum, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, gold, nickel, all those. Okay, So that's what makes up everything in, in different combinations. Element. So an element is anything that only has one type of atom. So that doesn't mean that it's always going to look exactly the same. So the best example of this are going to be the allotropes of carbon. So allotrope just means atoms put together in a different structure. So carbon atoms could bond together in sheets, which make, excuse me, graphite. Um, if they instead bond together in these network, they're called uh, tetrahedral, so like a three-dimensional network, that's actually just what makes up a diamond. So graphite and diamond have exactly the same chemical makeup. The only thing that's different between graphite and diamond is their way the atoms are bonded together. Okay, So these are our other examples of our carbon allotropes. I just wanted to emphasize that an element can still have bonds, Right? But it just means that it's only made up of one type of atom. So all of these are made up of just carbon. Whereas a compound, by definition, is something that is made up of more than one element, chemically combined. Okay, So any combination of elements that are chemically bound together. So for example, water. And we know water is an element because when you look at its formula, H2O, you can see that there are two hydrogens and one oxygen in every molecule of water. Carbon dioxide, CO2, just sugar, C12, H22O11. So that's going to have a lot of elements in it. Um, compounds are always going to have to contain more than one element, so two or more. If it's not two or more, then it's just an element. It's not a compound. And any compound has to always have the same combination of atoms. H2O, water, cannot have H4O. It's not water anymore. So it's what we call definite composition. Examples of what compounds look like. Um, particle diagrams, which are basically what these are, are going to be really useful in helping visualize what we're talking about in chemistry. So get used to seeing a lot of pictures of what these are going to look like bonded together. 
So these are just examples of uh, compounds. And when we do particle drawings, usually the different types of elements will just be different colors. Okay, so if you have blue and red, you clearly have two different elements. That is a compound. Um, some of these you can see have two bars between, whereas some have one, and we'll get into that later. That has to do with how they're bonded together. That is not a chapter three topic. All right, so our first question here, how many of the following are compounds? So put your answer in on Edpuzzle. Okay, so hopefully you put three. Um, three is the answer. Water is a compound. Sodium hydroxide here is a compound. And our manganese for oxide is also a compound. Um, my guess is the most common incorrect answer was probably four, is people might have put H2 as a compound. But remember, to be a compound, you have to have two or more elements. So H2 is just hydrogen atoms, even though there are two of them that is a hydrogen molecule, just an element. Uh, sodium is also by itself, that's just an element. All right, so those are the basics, elements versus compounds. Next, we're gonna look at pure substances versus mixtures. So if we have a pure substance, we have all of one type of thing, okay? What that means is a glass of water that water is a pure substance. Everything in that glass has the same chemical formula. They're all H2O. If I have a block of dry ice, I have all carbon dioxide. That is a pure substance. Um, if I have a block of gold, oh look, that's the example. A block of gold, also a pure substance. Every atom in that block is gold. So it just means that no matter what sample I get from my uh, substance, it will have the same chemical formula. So they can be elements or compounds as long as it's not a mix of multiple types of things, which leads us to mixtures. So mi mixtures are going to be any combination of elements and compounds together. It could just be two things. It could be a ton of things, right? As we know, most uh, everyday items are a combination of lots of different compounds. So I... <laughs> I did not make these examples. So wood, wine, coffee, and even pure maple syrup. I We did add that one because people think because it says the word pure that that means it's only one thing. But maple syrup itself has water in it. It has sugar in it. It has whatever it is that flavors it like maple. That's a lot of different compounds involved in one thing. Okay. Um, mixtures can be separated into their pure substances. Pure substances cannot be just separated unless you do a chemical reaction. Okay. Particle representations. So, and we're gonna pretend, and I should have added, maybe I will, a box around this. This, a top part, is an example of a particle diagram of a mixture. Okay, there's three different kinds of things in here. There's this compound, and I guess that could be an element if they're all the same color. Um, these brown ones and these green ones, we can tell they're not connected. So there's a mixture of three different things going on in there. Down here in each box, I have a pure substance. This is a pure substance of compounds. This is a pure substance of elements. Now, so what have we done so far? We talked about elements and compounds. We further clarified into what pure substances and mixtures are. Um, mixtures can come in two different types, okay? So we have homogeneous mixtures, okay? The prefix homo means same, okay? So homogeneous mixtures means it's the same throughout. Um, so if you had a glass, like milk, has a lot of different things in it, right? And here I think we have a list. Water, carbohydrates, fats, proteins. Um, but it looks the same. I look at milk white liquid. That's a solution. It's a homogeneous mixture. It looks the same throughout. Um, salt water. So I, I gave you a particle drawing of the salt water so that you would remember that there's many parts to it. There's going to be water molecules, sodium ions, and chlorine ions in salt water. But if you looked at a glass of salt water, it's homogeneous. It looks the same throughout. 
Um, air is a homogeneous mixture. There's lots of different types of elements in the air. Brass is a homogeneous mixture. It's actually a mix of two different metals. Okay. Uh, we already talked about salt water. So those are all examples of homogeneous mixtures. Basically, the key here is, does it look the same throughout? If so, it's a homogeneous mixture. Whereas heterogeneous mixtures are going to have very, not very, but they're going to have distinguishable parts. Okay, so like if you look here in this graduated cylinder, there's a green layer, a red layer, a yellow layer. That is a heterogeneous mixture. There are more things in that, a lot of things in that graduated cylinder, but you can see distinct parts. Um, cereal and milk has obvious parts. Ice and soda, there's that solid water part. There's the soda part. Those are distinguishable parts. Soil is an obvious uh, heterogeneous mixture. You can see little pebbles. You can see different types of soil. Uh, you can see bugs. There's lots of things in soil. So heterogeneous mixtures, you can tell the difference. Uh, what's another good example? A mixture, like Moose Tracks ice cream. You can see the different pieces of peanut butter cups and fudge in the ice cream. So that's a heterogeneous mixture. Oil and vinegar, they form different layers. Sand and water, you can see the different layers. Particle diagram. So if we have mixtures, we have those two different kinds. This one kind of shows that they're all mixed up throughout and you can't tell the difference. Um, whereas the heterogeneous mixture, one thing clusters in one area, the rest are in the in the remaining area. Um, so pure substances can be elements or compounds. So you'll see here, and this actually isn't the best image, but we have elements, all the same atom on the left. And on the right, we have a chemically combined two different elements. Our homogeneous mixture has the two different elements, but they're randomly dispersed throughout. Um, and then the heterogeneous mixture has discrete pockets of different elements. All right, concept check. I don't know if it's actually five. I took some stuff out. Um, so the question here, and this is a tricky question, so listen to my hint before you answer. So we want to know which of the following is a homogeneous mixture. So it means it has to look the same throughout, and it also has to be a mixture. Okay, homogeneous mixture. So give that a shot. Okay, so hopefully we picked gasoline for this because water is a pure substance. It's all one type of thing, okay? So it, in theory, looks the same throughout, but it doesn't qualify as a homogeneous mixture because it's not a mixture. Gasoline is a mix of a lot of things. Um, so if you just didn't know that gasoline was a mix of things, I'll forgive you for getting this one wrong, um, but it is a lot of different things. But if you look at a can of, ga a can of gas, the gas looks the same throughout. Jar of jelly beans does not look the same throughout. You're going to have red ones and yellow ones and green ones. Soil is a mix of a lot of things, not homogenous. And copper metal is not a mixture. It is a single element. So that's a pure substance. All right. So I wanted to go through this example because I love particle diagrams. So in each of these boxes, we could describe whether we see elements or compounds, and we could describe whether we see a pure substance or a mixture. So I'm gonna do a couple of these with you, and then I'm gonna have you answer. One, I guess, by yourself. Okay, so for A, if I look in that box, I see they all look the same, right? Every molecule in there is that pink circle with the blue circle. So that is a um, pure substance, right? No matter what I reached in, I would get the same molecule, pure substance. So now we need to determine if that is a um, element or a compound. So since we have two different color circles, that is going to be a compound because we have two or more different elements combined. So your answer would be pure substance of a compound. For B, 
when we reach in that box, we would not always get the same thing. I have the dark tealish circles and I have the light blue circles. Um, so that is gonna be a mixture. Now we need to say if it's gonna be elements or compounds. So this is the tricky one here. So these circles here are clearly elements, right? It's just one atom all by itself. These two are actually also elements because they're both that same type of atom, uh, even if they are bonded together. So that is gonna be a mixture of two different elements for part C. When you reach in, you could get a variety of things, so that's gonna be a mixture. We have these pink circles, which are elements, and we have these yellow and teal um, compounds. Um, so that is a compound. So we have a mixture of elements and compounds. Oh no, I gave the answer. D, we reach in the box, you're always gonna grab the same thing, so that's pure substance. Um, they are compounds, so pure substance of compounds. E, reach in the box, you're always gonna grab the same thing, so it's a pure substance. They are in pairs, but they are the same element. Um, we can shoot, see that here by the color. So this is a pure substance of an element. So the last thing I'm going to have you do for today is to answer what is in box F. And hopefully you answer pure substance of an element. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. I will see you for Friday's lecture. Have a wonderful day. And by lecture, I mean live session.